What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. Today we're gonna to be checking out something that is way future CSS, uh, not ready to be used in production, and that is container queries. All right, so if we take a look at this example, we'll see that uh, we have our typical sort of just card layout. There's four cards. Um, the, first, the top three are wrapped inside of a, a grid container that creates three columns automatically. Um, that's not the part that we're interested in. What we're interested in is the fact that there's a fourth one down here and it is in a completely different type of layout. This is all stacked vertical, but this is a two column layout. We do this without any CSS media queries based on the viewport. This is based on what's used container queries. All right, so in order to use this very experimental, experimental feature, you have to download uh, Google uh, Canary, Canary, what am I talking, I, I can't even talk. And when you download this, it's basically the same thing as your regular Google Chrome. In fact, this, this is Google Canary right here that you see, um, except it just includes uh, the very latest cutting edge features that they haven't yet integrated into the actual uh, Google Chrome release. And so when you download this, make sure also after launching it that you type in Chrome flags and you make sure that enable CSS container queries is enabled. So you'll have to search for this uh, CSS container queries up here first, and then just, uh, oops, that didn't work. Uh, and you'll see that uh, you just click on enable and then restart it. So enable and then relaunch the browser, and then you'll be able to use this feature. If we take this and just go to regular Chrome over here, and we paste this in, we'll see it does not work. It doesn't put this into a two column layout. Um, so just know that you have to use Google Canary. All right, and so with that said, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now wait one second, you're about to watch me show you a future front end development technique. Now what if you're not a very good front end developer? Well, you should definitely take the front end developer career path at scrimba.com. They recently launched their front end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. All right, so you'll notice I have a different sort of looking um, theme for my Visual Studio Code, and that's because in the last uh, video I showed you how to make one, and this is mine. If you want it, you can go ahead and just install, it. it's, it's called Design Course, uh, the theme. Anyhow, so let's get started here. So what we're gonna do first is just work on the HTML. Um, we're gonna create just a, an inner container. This has nothing to do with the actual container, um, the purpose of the tutorial yet. So we're just gonna have H1, um, the latest results, something like that. And then let's put a paragraph, like a subheadline, lorem 15 or something like that. Okay, um, after that, this is where we're going to have um, like our actual articles. So my intention for this is on like a large desktop, it's gonna have three columns uh, having the same three cards. Um, so for, in order to create that, we have to create the HTML element for that parent container. And we could use Flexbox or Grid to create those three columns. Um, so we're gonna do just call three. And then inside of here, this is where it's, it's things change up a little bit uh, based on using these container queries. We need to have a container wrapper of some sort that's the parent of each one of these cards and th those will be our containers and, and we'll be able to determine um, through the contain property the containers width. All right, so we'll, we'll ex explain this a little bit more when we get to the CSS. So we're gonna have uh, just a wrapper. We can call it whatever you want, of course. And then inside, we're gonna have the card. So then we're gonna have a class card. And inside of here, we'll just create the regular card content as we wish. So image source, I already have a card.jpg right here. This is from Unsplash. And you can use whatever image you want, of course. Um, so there'll be an image at the top, a, a typical card design. Um, and then we're gonna have a, a class of content which will serve as the parent of all of the type-based content. And then we're gonna have a paragraph uh, with a class of title that says a super fast car. Don't worry, there's not much more markup. We're gonna have a call to here. 
um, this will serve as the parent container between um, two columns of content and there will always be two columns I just because it, it, it's only going to contain um, a year like two, 2018 or something and then also shift alt and down to replicate we'll have miles and so this will be like 17,000 miles all right and then finally we'll have like a paragraph of this uh, like a description um, lorem I don't know 30 something like that okay so that's that's all our card is going to be um, and you can see we have all the way from here to here that we want to copy and we're going to put this three times paste it rather right there then just to demonstrate why is it doing I hate when it does that just to demonstrate um, what you know the purpose of this tutorial is is we're gonna have one that's sitting outside of this column three um, and so let me do that real quick actually no this should be inside of the, the, the container class which is up here okay so we have three that are inside of call three and then oh did I did I do this wrong I'm wondering I forget there's like a way to, to select everything and just get it all there we go I think that's what we're supposed to do there we go yeah and then this final one I uh, this will just be yeah that that's how I want it I think whatever anyways so there's three that are inside of call three and then one that is just you know in its own it's inside of a container so what we'll do um, I want to open with live server you have to have the live server extension and right now it's gonna open up in uh, my default Chrome and that's not going to that's no good so we want to go to canary and we'll paste in its uh, localhost um, 5501 all right there we go so this is what it looks like let's go ahead and start getting this styled up a little bit just for um, getting this up and running so basically I uh, we're gonna get some uh, initial stuff out of the way that's not really pertinent to the purpose of this tutorial just taking all this box sizing before after I kind of just include this and in, in at the top of almost every project I do um, we have all this stuff so if we save you're gonna see we have is that the one? Oh, it's over here that's why all right this is what it looks like so far nothing not a big deal um, we're gonna take our card we're just gonna do a background of white padding 1m and margin top will be 2m units all right so looking at that further this is what we have we're also going to have our image make sure that width is 100 percent for a responsive image uh, we're going to take all the paragraphs and do margin zero okay and then here's the part that's important um, so in order for the container query to work you have to have uh, an actual container element by which it's judging the size so what we want is to put wrapper and that's going to be our contain element so contain we say layout and then there's a, a number of different properties there's two there's initial property uh, of layout uh, this one can be multiple elements uh, let's go here to CSS contain property this is uh, admittedly this is a property that I don't really know a ton about uh, yes you can see here's the keyword values uh, there's multiple keywords which is what we're gonna use um, we can see this non strict content size layout we're gonna use layout here and I'm um, we're also going to use layout inline size now of course when we do this by itself nothing changes I keep on going to Chrome by accident nothing at all changes here so let's go ahead first and create just the regular mobile first CSS I might as well do this real quick and just get this situated right here and then we will get our element right here that way we could see what's happening kind of like in a mobile first context 
So what we want to do is we'll take our content, which is wrapping all this stuff, and we will say margin 1M, just to give it some more white space on the inside. We're also going to take the title. Font size will be like 1.8 rem units. Uh, font weight will be bold. Outside of there, oops. We're gonna do a uh, column of two. Display will be flex. Now this is for the, 18, the 2018 and the 17,000 miles. And we'll do justify content space between. All right, so that pushes it over. Margin top is going to be 0.5m, 0. And actually, that looks like that did not work at all. Oh, I think it's, yeah, I should have placed this. Eh, no big deal. We can just get rid of that. That should be placed on the actual paragraph elements themselves. Um, font weight will be bold. And color will be gray. Okay. And then we're almost done. Description, margin top. 1.5 M units. There, that's good in and of itself. There we go. All right, so these, this is the design here that we have. Of course, this looks terrible, right? Now, normally we'd have to we'd use something like media queries um, based on the viewport of the browser in order to change these up. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our call three and we're gonna say display grid and we're gonna do that fancy technique, grid type of columns, to create a responsive uh, columns without using media queries. Now this, of course, I've covered this specific technique, this actual property and value in a different tutorial. Um, min max, let's see, we'll say 20 M's of one fractional unit. And what this does is when we expand this out, oh, it's not working. Let's do gap 1M, one second. Yeah, it's not working because I, I thought this was messed up when I was working with this. Um, let me take out of this and just delete it. All right, so this is the contain, there we go. So I need to redo this, everything inside of here. There we go, so we take this, Sorry about that. Now we have three inside of here. Now if we bring this out, that's how it's supposed to behave. Okay, um, and then we'll take one more and place it outside. Okay, so now we have four of them and this is what we're working with. So right here, this is what we want to prevent. This is the use case for container queries. Um, we wanna be able to make this automatically kind of like uh, create a two column layout where we have this photograph here on the left and then take this here and push it uh, this stuff to the right because this looks bad in and of itself. So to remedy that, we're gonna come back here um, and we have to put container and we're gonna put min width, kind of you know, just like the, the mobile first media queries, min width of and, and you may have to play with this value, and I, I know I did. I put 65 M units to determine at uh, which point these cards are going to readjust from being stacked, like they are up here, to you know something that fits you know this wider size a little bit better. So for me, that was 65 M units. So we're going to take our card and we'll display flex. Now the card is just this you know the whole parent container inside of this card element or just two child elements. So we have our card, inside we have an image, and then we have the content. So display flex, very quick way of just creating two columns based on um, elements that are stacked or that are you know in its container. All right, so we save and we get this automatically. Um, if I change this to flex 110px, and then also we'll take our image and we'll do, um, oh wait, our image and our content. We, if we wanna create a 50-50 columns, first we do a flex a grow of one and then flex basis zero. And 
And then inside, I uh, will put up, up here image. We're gonna do object fit cover with a width of like 200 pixels. Okay, there we go. All right, so what is happening here? So what we have is, let's just minimize this. Oops, get that out of here. All right, so by default, everything looks the same here because the parent or the contain element, which is the wrapper, I has a width that is less than 65 m units. All right, now when we expand this all the way to like right here, it is still only 65 m units or less than 65 m units. Um, if we come down here and we expand this out and look at the last one, which is not wrapped in that that uh, the grid, you'll see right there. This transforms into the two column layout defined within our container query. Uh, and, and so what that means is these up here, because they're already wrapped in um, a grid, and this could be Flexbox too, their size is a lot less than 65, uh, 65 M units. So it's never going to end up meeting the requirements of that uh, that first container uh, query where it's like uh, 65 M units. And so this is the value. So if we take this, by the way, and go to regular Chrome, we will see that, let me get this over here. This is really zoomed up. Let's reset this. We're gonna see it doesn't work. This is what we're trying to avoid and this is what container queries help solve. Very, very, very cool stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. Obviously, you can't use this in production, but it's always fun to look at you know, the future of CSS. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, a like, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Yay!